in terms of kind of the contours of these broader structural issues, I lay out three. Um, there are many more and different ways of, of taking a crack at it, but I think these three are kind of useful principles for, for organizing the way we think about it. The first is inequality. Occupy Wall Street has kind of brought this to the fore, and I'm sure everyone um, here today is, is pretty familiar with this, the statistics, but from the 1940s through the 1970s, Americans' incomes were growing together up and down the income ladder. Everyone's incomes roughly doubled. From the 1970s through the present, there's been a very, very different pattern. The, economy, the incomes at the top have grown dramatically, about 275% for the top 1%, whereas incomes um, for the middle class have grown much more slowly. The vast majority of that growth is due to increased women's labor force participation. Um, so it's really families are putting in more hours and they're seeing more income, but that's a very different pattern than what we've seen at the top. So that's kind of point one, is that income inequality was around before the recession. The recession hasn't changed that all that much. You can kind of you know, play with the numbers and it's made some difference, but the basic issue of a shrinking middle class um, is, is there and has been there prior to the recession. And just returning to the status quo of, of 2006 isn't gonna do all that much. Um, second point is economic mobility. Americans in the past haven't really cared all that much about inequality because we have this idea that in America, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that we're super unequal because I can be that rich guy over there if I work hard enough. The stats really don't bear that out. And my colleagues here at Brookings have done great work um, really putting some numbers behind this. If we were a perfectly equal society, a child born into the bottom fifth of the income distribution should have the same chance of ending up in the top as a child born into the top. That's not the case at all. Um, I don't want to mix up the numbers, but for, suffice it to say that if you're born into the bottom, you are far more likely um, to stay in the bottom. If you're born into the top, you are far more likely to stay into the top. It's quite difficult in America to, to make it to the top if you're born poor. Um, we like to think that we do better than many European countries at promoting mobility. We actually don't. Um, if you look at a comparison of this um, intergenerational mobility across countries, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, um, and the UK, which we like to compare ourselves to. It's kind of the classic class-bound society versus the Horatio Alger America. The UK is actually more mobile than the US. So even that kind of classic defense against inequality, this idea of mobility, doesn't really hold up particularly well. The recession has done nothing to change that. It remains to be seen, actually, what the recession will mean for mobility, because we have gener a generation of kids and young adults being born into a very challenging economy. All of the economic evidence we have from past recession shows that it's quite difficult um, and has, has a big impact on your career over the long term to enter the labor market in, in recession. So if anything, the recession bodes poorly for a trend that was also already not looking particularly good. And then the last piece is this idea of economic insecurity, which is kind of like the short-term version of the economic mobility thing. Insecurity is this idea of what happens to your income over the short term. Um, and there is a, a body of research showing that from the 1970s through roughly the 1990s, your risk of a big income drop was rising. And this wasn't just, you know, a recession happened and so a lot of people experienced a big drop. A recession would happen and income volatility, for example, your risk of losing half your income in, in a given year period. That would spike during a recession, but instead of going back down to where it was prior to recession, it would plateau at a new normal that wasn't a particularly happy new normal if you're interested in, in income security. Um, and so there's good reason to believe, particularly given the depth of this recession and how many people experienced really dramatic drops in their income that would sort of continued up along this jagged upward trend, which is not a particularly good place to be. So I, I'm generally an optimist in terms of my my view on the world, except that <laughs> <fooled me. laughs> my perspective here is really but to a few kind of teeny problems. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> to layer it's really to say that it's a much more complicated <clears throat> issue than than the already very difficult issue that Martin's put on the table, which is this issue of, of stimulating um, of stimulating growth through demand, that we can't just do that. We have to really address these broader issues or else we're really not going to to be the country that I think we'd all like ourselves to be.